Good morning, Bitcoin. Today is Thursday, May 27th, 2021. My name is Thomas Hunt, and welcome to the fifth anniversary of Craig Wright not providing proof of being Satoshi Nakamoto. As you can see from the graphic here, we're still waiting for Craig Wright to sign a transaction. We're joined today by Arthur Van Pelt, a researcher into not Satoshi Nakamoto, who's been following this on Twitter and keeping you updated for years now as we have waited patiently for the proof of Satoshi Nakamoto. How's it going, Arthur? Welcome to the show. Yeah, thanks for having me uh, <laughs> for the second time. Um, yeah, yeah, great to be back. Now, we did, we did put out some tweets today. There was a possibility that uh, Craig Wright could prove that he was Satoshi in the time between when I announced the show and when we launched the show, but that did not happen. We did not receive any proof today. Did you receive any proof by any chance? Nope. No, no proof was received. And it's never going to happen either. I don't think so either, but uh, we'll see how it goes. So let's go ahead and go all the way back to the beginning of the Craig Wright is Satoshi Nakamoto story. And maybe even a little bit before that. I, I was fortunate in 2015, I got to go to the Bitcoin Investor Conference in Las Vegas. Now, what's interesting about this is that there was a huge conference in Las Vegas called the Money 2020 Conference. And I, I got to go to that one the next year, but I didn't go to that one. I went to this smaller one called the Bitcoin Investor Conference. And it turned out that was where all the cool stuff happened. It was a pretty incredible conference looking back at it now. I got to meet Nick Scabo, and, and like meet him for real, like we hung out, like not that I know him now or that he'd remember me at all, but we hung out, it was cool. And uh, so he made a speech, as you can see here, he's making a speech. I was also able to film this speech and put it on the internet for you at the Mad Bitcoins channel. And then um, I was on a panel with uh, Bitcoin Bell, Stephanie Murphy, Professor Joseph Salerno, and my friend Blake Anderson. And that was really cool. We were on a panel together uh, at the conference and then there was another panel called the All-Star Panel, where Ed Moy, uh, who I think was a Treasury Secretary, used to work at the Federal Reserve, like real legit, you know, normal, real world money guy, Ed Moy, uh, Joseph Von Perling, I don't recall him, Trace Mayer, uh, certainly an interesting character these days. It's interesting how, how time changes. Nick Scabo, yep. again, one of the possibilities for Satoshi for a long time, there's been that... Uh, matching of the semantic analysis of his uh, sentences, sentence structure analysis. They thought he might've been the one. And then this strange character showed up from Australia via video conference called Dr. Craig Wright. And let's listen to just a little bit of Bitcoin Bell asking him a question and Dr. Craig Wright's response. And Dr. Craig, did you wanna say something about that? I think everyone continues to think too small. I mean, the homomorphic properties of ETC basically mean that we can exchange a cryptographic key, a symmetric key, and encrypt documents, load those, uh, store them as a function uh, that we can relate to on the blockchain itself. Um, but more than that, we can actually link it into things like IPsec, and we can build firewall policies that are transmitted because of purchasing a token. And by tokenizing all these things, by tokenizing access, we can then take our access via the blockchain, shared keys, and because the nature of ECC, we can actually have your, um, well, your public key by my secret key equals the value uh, under point multiplication, point addition of uh, the opposite. So my public key by your secret key, we can take a hash of that, use a deterministic function, and then we can actually find a, a shared hash that we can both recalculate. So if we're talking about things like um, access to websites, digital rights management, we, we have all that capability actually there. So the majority, I mean, we're still thinking it's just money. There's so much more. So um, can you tell me, because you've now moved your operation, your family and your business and everything from Australia to London and or, um, I saw that you were, you know, doing some things in Iceland and things. So why, um, why did you do that? And, um, you know, I, I assume that it's for the purpose of <laughs> the advantages to Bitcoin. Sorry, we just kind of lost some color there. Okay. Um, well, 
Um, Iceland's because of power. Um, it, it's much, much cheaper in, um, in Iceland to run computers. And the main one that we've got at the moment um, is called Tulip. And Tulip's number 15 in the top uh, 500 supercomputers, I believe. So Your the, computer is named Tulip? Is that what you said? Uh, Tulip. Okay. Yeah, we call it Tulip. Okay, we call it Tulip. So beginning here, so we're all watching the panel in the audience, and it's pretty interesting because I didn't even record the panel. I assumed that the other people could handle it. I was more excited about getting the Nick Scabo recording. That's what I was into. And um, looking back at it, later on in the day, we were all together in the hotel room, and uh, Professor Joel Salerno and I were talking about this, this exchange right here where they talked about the supercomputer Tulip which was in the top 15 of supercomputers in the entire world. And this was before the, <clears throat> this was at the beginning of the Bitcoin scaling debate and that kind of thing. And everyone was like, well, I wonder what will happen if Bitcoin was scale, would scale, right? And one of the things we wanted to test this on was a supercomputer. And we were yeah. like, if only we had a supercomputer, we could simulate what would happen to the blockchain and we could do all this analysis and we could get some kind of an estimate on if it will scale and if it will fail and doubling the blocks and all these kind of questions could be tested on a supercomputer. And Professor Salermo, you know, looked at me and he'd seen the panel that we did together and stuff. I didn't know him or anything, but he was like, I wish you had been moderating that discussion because I know you would have asked the follow-up question. You know, what did you do with the supercomputer? What did it do? And later on, as we found out through newspapers and uh, Wired magazine and things like that, he didn't even have the supercomputer. He didn't even buy it. Uh, allegedly, and we want to be very careful here, we want to say allegedly a lot, but allegedly he took a grant money from the Australian government, said that he used it for a supercomputer, and I don't know what he used it for. It sounds like uh, back to the future. I, they wanted a uh, fission bomb, and I gave him a you know pinball parts, and he took the plutonium. So it was really interesting. This was my introduction to Craig Wright. And this was before he claimed to be Satoshi Nakamoto. And it was a really interesting uh, addition to the Bitcoin scene. There's a little bit of curious history there with him and Bitcoin Bell. And I don't want to get into that too much, but she was very influential in the conference, very influential into getting him on that panel. As I told you, that panel was Edmund Moy from like Treasury or you know, Fed, like legit guy, Trace Mayer, major investor, Nick yep. Scabo. Like that other guy that I forget, but still major panel, right? So uh, Arthur, I'd like to get your opinion so far. What, what do you think about, about what I've talked about and, and just this very early beginnings of the Craig Wright story? Uh, it's, 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 it's probably the same era where I learned about uh, him, uh, but I did not actually watch this uh, uh, when it happened back then. There, there is this funny anecdote that he sent out a tweet, uh, I think the month before this happened, somewhere in October, that he has been testing on that supercomputer uh, with, uh, well, Gigamex uh, performance. And um, and then when you read uh, the ATO report uh, that they visited his uh, offices and, uh, and, 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 and checked his stuff, indeed, those supercomputers never existed. So how, how it all happened and how he could even, yeah, pretend to be doing something with a supercomputer, it, it, it's beyond me. Well, and yeah. I think it's, it's important to get the roots of this scam and where it came from. In the very beginning, this very first fact about Craig Wright, the first thing we learned that made him interesting is that he had a supercomputer and that this very first yeah, fact was not true. true. It was, yeah, and it true. wasn't proven. And he got into this strange conference through Bitcoin Bell, maybe through a personal relationship. It's not for me to say, but still... That this is how you kind of worm your way into the Bitcoin, right? You kind of yeah. you gotta start from somewhere. Shall I, in in, in brief, tell the, the 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 background how it all started? Because that is, has been my my specialty uh, a little bit, and and still people are a little bit shocked uh, to hear, uh, well, shocked or surprised uh, to hear all this. But his scam actually started in um, uh, the second half of um, 2013 already. That's where he uh, uh, did some, 
Yeah, he created some forgeries about Bitcoin uh, intellectual property. He went to the New South Wales uh, Supreme Court. He got their signature that it happened as he wrote it down. There was uh, the W and K uh, from Dave uh, Kleiman as a counterparty, but he already died, so he could not uh, protest anymore. So what happened on paper, he had uh, some 56 million in uh, Bitcoin IP. That grow further in early 2014 that he started carefully uh, role playing uh, the, the Satoshi role. He and Dave were the team and the third person that was not mentioned uh, in the beginning. And that grew over the 2014. Uh, for example, the Tulip story is from October 2014. He needed uh, to pay $1.6 million in tax. And to avoid that, he bought an off the shelf uh, company from 2011 called Tulip Trading Limited. And from there, he created several more forgeries uh, where he put all his mining in. And, and now, yeah, the, it became lie on top of a, a false story and on top of another lie and create uh, mixed with uh, more forgeries and that's how uh, the book was it mainly the, was it lie. mainly localized to australia at this point was he mainly operating and you said yeah. that the court in new south wales the tulip company was that an australian company yeah the now it, it, actually the the tulip trading limited was a seychelles uh, company and he was uh, in those years he was busy creating uh, more and more companies he already had a few he created a few more and uh, it ended up uh, when, when we jumped to december uh, 2015 uh, just after this um, event with uh, sabo uh, he got raided by the ato because at that point they were totally fed up with him and his uh, <laughs> <laughs> bookkeeping uh he had uh, what I, I made calculations that he had roughly in in 100 million dollars in uh, fake and false uh, and fraudulent uh, tax return uh, claims uh, thrown at the ato yeah and at, at, at some point they, yeah they raided him they took all his companies and his uh, his bookkeeping his, his records and his files and it ended up that uh, roughly uh, 10 of those companies uh, got folded, bankrupt, and um, yeah. And that's why- uh, Now that seems like a good reason to leave Australia. It's not because you need power for your computer in Iceland, your computer that doesn't exist, but it sounds like all of this, uh, the filings with the court, all of these companies, all of this pressure. Did he have some kind of a grant from the Australian government to get this computer? Was he tied in there? Is that why they raided him? Yeah, it's a, it, it's a bit the other way around. You, you have to start uh, doing things or you have to have investors and, uh, and and already have found some money. And on paper, he had this money uh, as the, the Bitcoin IP uh, coming back from uh, Dave Kleiman, uh, his company that they had together in 2011, WNK. Um, but it was used for totally different projects that it tried to uh, land from uh, from the US gov uh, United States government um which failed we tried to uh, get a few million from uh, the u.s government for <laughs> from from yeah from homeland security that was no yeah, they, they heard no 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 four times and it didn't happen after all but uh, he used that empty company after dave's uh, dave's death he used that company to uh, pretend that he put in uh, ip and he wanted that ip back and he valued it as, at 56 million dollar well, it was worth nothing because it was it was nothing. It, it didn't exist. So he created from thin air. He created fifty six million, and that fifty six million he pushed forward in several uh, of those uh, companies. It started with a handful, and it ended up with roughly ten, twelve of those companies, uh, all doing something with uh, Bitcoin. Well, there were actually a few companies having some personnel and 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 etc. From there, he built the. Uh, what is called the, the Hotwire Group, which was immediately bankrupt within um, in, in in early 2000, I think April 2014, that went bankrupt because yeah he didn't get the tax returns in time. And in 2015 he tried again with the Morgan Group, basically a repacked uh, repackaged uh, Hotwire, and. Um, yeah, he tried even for, for more money. I remember 54 million in tax returns. 
but as far as we know, he didn't get much, and uh, it ended up that yeah, they raided him, took his uh, took his files. And, so uh, mainly at this point, what what kind of scam is he running? Is he not? He's not claiming to be Satoshi yet, but he's telling all these people he has Bitcoin, he has Bitcoin IP. Has he started the thing with the, the yeah, letter, yeah, 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 the yeah, letter yeah, carrier? 2014 already uh, uh, to the Kleiman family, he already uh, pretended to be uh, Satoshi, but he, I think he kept it rather low profile in uh, 2014 and early 2015. Bitcoin Bell, he learned Bitcoin Bell, for example, uh, I think in the first half year of 2015. I think she was a bit charmed, so to say, uh, by him, but he was already telling her that he was Satoshi. And I, as far as I know, she believed him in, in the beginning. And now a little, a little background on Bitcoin Bell. Uh, she's a big libertarian, a big New Hampshire type person, free stater, very yeah. early Bitcoiner, very enthusiastic. Uh, she's written kind of a novel now. I haven't checked it out. We used to hang out. Uh, so she's a nice person. And I, I'm sorry she's all tumbled up in this, but it's a historical fact now. We have to talk yeah. about it. So, yeah, yeah. They, they met. Uh, he tells her he's Satoshi. And then she has all these kind of connections because she's old yeah. uh, New Hampshire, old free stater connected to all these Bitcoiners. Um, yeah. And what, what happens next? Yeah, I think I think Roger, Roger Ver, for example, um, was introduced to uh, Craig uh, with the line uh, Bitcoin Bell, if, as far as I know. And, and Roger Ver is, is uh, if you ask me, also an important uh, figure because up till 2018, far, far in, uh, I think, uh, pretty close to the split up between uh, BCH and BSV, uh, Roger Ver was supporting um, Craig Wright also and, and, and endorsing him as Satoshi. But somehow he found, kind of luckily, he found out that Craig is indeed a con man, a liar and a fraud. And um, so, uh, Roger Fur said, "Bye bye. I, uh, I'm not going with you anymore." Yeah, but it 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 grew it grew on him. It, uh, it as far as I can see, Craig had uh, needed to have an excuse for. But how do you have? Uh, how is it possible that you have so much uh, uh, Bitcoin? Because he uh, already from the start, let's say 2013, 14, he already started. Uh, uh, fooling around with hundreds of thousands of Bitcoin that he pretended to have. And, and yeah, the more you push him, the more he has to try to explain how did he get it. So it started in 2013, early 2014 with being an, an early miner, but already uh, in February 2014 to the Kleiman family, he said already that, uh, in, as far as I can see, a bit to, to test the water, uh, I'm, I'm going to do a an, uh, an Satoshi role play. And it worked. And from there onwards, uh, it worked with more people and, and some people called him out, but he didn't care. And he did, because I have to give him that he's pretty brazen in, uh, in how he is acting. And he, well, there, he I heard this interesting story once. And again, it's just a story. I don't have a source, but I'd heard that someone talked to his mother once and his mother explained to that person that Craig was the kind of person where if you said, hey, I like to play pool, he'd be like, I was the world champion of billiards when I was 12 years old. And if you yeah. say, hey, I like to swim, you would say, I'm a champion swimmer. I once won three gold medals in high school. And he was just yeah. that kind of boasting character. Yeah. So yeah. he kind of drifted off the radar for a while. And then <laughs> this huge article in Wired magazine. And again, Wired, the company that destroyed their Bitcoin that they mined, they actually got a Butterfly Labs miner. Then they intentionally oh, yeah, destroyed it. And every yeah. year they're like, remember when we lost the keys to our Bitcoin? And it's like, no, no, you intentionally destroyed it. And you wrote an article about how smart you were to destroy it. And everyone else was like, you could donate that to the needy. You could help people. You could save it. Yeah. You could buy your whole magazine in 10 years, you know, which we all said to them and they all ignored. But anyway, Wired here has updated this headline because it used to just not have a question mark. It used to not say probably not. And it didn't say updated. It said Bitcoin's creator is this unknown Australian genius. And, um, and then it just got crazy. I remember the, the day this article came out, uh, my friends, you know, everyone sent it to me. I started reading about it, started doing a show. My first thought, my first idea was, again, always with this Satoshi news, I'm always like just calmed. I'm like, 
oh, it's great. We have a Satoshi. Like we can stop worrying about this now. The media can stop bugging us. He's got a computer science degree. Maybe he's a man of letters, you know, all this kind of stuff. You just, you think all these kind of positive thoughts because the mystery is over. The chase, the chase has ended. But then just like with Dorian Satoshi Nakamoto, which was also, I felt calmed with, I was really, I was like, this is great. We got a Satoshi. And then, you know, three hours later, it all falls apart. The whole story falls apart. He just wants a free lunch. The same kind of thing here. Already that day, I was getting messages from a couple of my friends who were smarter than I was. And they were like, I don't know. This smells funny. It doesn't look right. So Arthur, what did you think when this article came out? Uh, were you watching the uh, Satoshi drama then? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And, and um, although I did not interfere in the discussions uh, back then, I was already active on, uh, on Twitter. I was already in Bitcoin. I knew Bitcoin since 2012 and bought my first in 2013 before the uh, big hype in, in uh, later that year. But the, um, uh, I, I already heard and knew about him. I read the articles. I did not have a firm opinion that I wanted to express well, like I do now in, in the same way that I do and Generally, now. Are, are you like me? Do you root for a Satoshi? Do you want the mystery to be over? Or are you satisfied yeah. 20 years, 30 years, four years, never found a Satoshi, never yeah. discovered? Oh, yeah. I'm perfectly fine with that, actually. I, I hope that happens because then at least Bitcoin and the only one who is able at this moment to prove that it does not depend on a spiritual or financial or economical or political whatever leader. And as long as Satoshi uh, stays away and, and hopefully he is alive and he is happy with what's going on and he sees that his project is flourishing as, as it should be with the three big groups, eh? the users and the miners and, and the developers are uh, uh, eh, always finding this equilibrium in, in how to move forward in in a good and, and technical sound way. As long as he is happy, please please stay out and 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 prove that it is a, a decentralized project as it is. I used to have a great graphic of that. I called it the Bitcoin triangle, and I was like, users, pro, you know, developers, uh, miners, just like you're saying, they all have different goals, and that we had the big you know rough up over the block size war and all that stuff. Uh, but mm -hmm. yeah, I always think of that triangle. I have a diagram somewhere. But uh, let's talk a bit about the idea of proof. You'd think that this would be pretty simple. Like I'm having an online uh, mess around. It's a fun little debate I'm having with these crypto punks guys where crypto punks, they made an art NFT and they made it in like September. And me and my guys, we made an art NFT in May of 2017. And it's no big deal. Like they're still in Christie's. They're still on the New York Times, on the Times Square billboards and everything. No one's going to take that away from them. They sold for millions of dollars there. They're a great project. But the yeah. blockchain, uh, unfortunately, the Ethereum blockchain, but the blockchain yeah. proves that my NFT project is older than their NFT project. It doesn't mean anything. I don't get a million dollars or anything, but that's proof. It's on the blockchain. It is what it is. It is a fact, right? As far as I'm concerned. Um, with this, you think it would be similar. You think it'd be relatively easy if Satoshi came back for him to prove with, I don't know, being able to sign a transaction, being able to move some Bitcoin, having maybe some early source code or some early documents, which is a little more fuzzy. But that stuff on the blockchain is, is tight, right? It's not like we're talking about Shakespeare and did Marlowe write his plays and we're analyzing this and he never went to Cornwallis and all this kind of things. Like, all no, not that. It's it's the blockchain, right? We should be able to relatively say if Satoshi kept any of his keys or any of his coins or any of the files that it would need to access this, he'd have it. If he destroyed all those things, which again, you might want to, you might want to be Prometheus and walk away from this thing and not get your liver ripped out every day by a bird, you know, pushing that rock up the hill forever. You have options, right? You're Satoshi Nakamoto. You're really clever. So if he just destroys everything, and then he feels bad later. Like, is that, could that be a possibility? What do you think about these ideas of proof and just a generic Satoshi, what a generic would do? No, yeah, that, that is uh, what is sometimes uh, rumored or said by, by the BSV fans and, and uh, the fake Toshi fans that, uh, yeah, he has to rebuild all his evidence. That's why he comes up with so many forgeries. Yeah, I think that's nonsense because there should always be something that is genuine. There should be and will be 
uh, I mean, I, I have a little list of, of four things. If ever um, uh, the real Satoshi pops up and 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 once and is is willing to show himself to uh, or herself, who knows, uh, to the world, um, yeah, indeed, use a key to sign one of those blocks, one of those addresses that we are one hundred percent certain. For example, the Genesis block is uh, is 100 percent uh, certain that he did and created uh, that one and uh, he uh, he should be yeah having the the private key for that what he also should have and could have and still uh, 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 yeah he should be able to to have access to it are uh, the early emails with uh, several uh, uh, by die and, and Adam back and then well name them Halfini and, and all those ogs and there are several, well, many actually, have never been released or, or made public. He should be able to, well, take, for example, at a back, uh, but it, there are randomly uh, several other examples, but uh, let's take Adam back. He can just uh, show an, um, an email that he had uh, back and forth with Adam back. And if Adam back says, yeah, true, see, I have the same uh, email. Well, then you have two, rep uh, two people with good reputation uh, talking with each other and confirming each other's existence. Um, that would already be a good proof for me. He can uh, log on to uh, the, 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 the P2P Foundation Forum. He can log on to, um, no, likely not to, to Bitcoin talk, but um, uh, what, else, what, what other places can he uh, log on to? Uh, he can um, uh, match it out, for example, he, I think, uh, and post a, a mail message, for example. If those things will show, he can use his old uh, PGP keys to sign messages, uh, email messages. So four or five things I can already mention that if he is able to do three or four of them, and for one, he has a clear explanation. For example, like you said, if he is losing the private keys, uh, or destroy them uh, for a good reason, and he has a good excuse for that. Yeah, I can accept that. But there will still four other things remaining that he can still and should be able to do. Now, going back to Craig Wright, he is spending millions, dozens of millions to avoid an excuse for every single of those five points. So it totally makes no sense. It really doesn't. I mean, I understand part of it where I'd say, okay, I don't think Satoshi or anybody really wants to have those uh, thousand Bitcoins or whatever there is, the hundred thousand Bitcoins, all the early ones, they're kind of good where they are. And if they moved, it would mess up the market. And, you know, I just don't know what you do with billions of dollars, but if he burned all those keys, they're all gone. They're, like you say, there's still three or four other ways, very easy that he could prove that he was the one like the guys are saying, if he destroys all of his proof, uh, I what kind of scientist can prove something with false proof? Once you start making false proof, you're not a scientist anymore. You're not part of the intellectual discussion I think we're having here. I'm a historian. Other people are other things. They're trained and they're trained in their disciplines to follow these rules. Like if I, you know, I would quote things accurately as a historian. That's what I'm trained to do. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, you know, this guy should prove things. And if you were the Satoshi, but you didn't have the proof, why wouldn't you just chuckle? Like sit back and laugh. Eventually the proof's going to come along because as good as you think you are, you probably left a key in there somewhere. You know, you left your name in there somewhere. Like the, the story, at least allegedly of the Dread Pirate Roberts that back in the day he was on forums saying, how do you start a really cool drug website with Bitcoin? And they found all those posts and they're like, oh, this, you know, even if we didn't have all the other stuff, like the links and things, we've got these early posts where you're talking about doing this. Yeah. There's no way that Craig Wright didn't do that at some point, that he yeah. wasn't like talking uh, about PGP or something with somebody on the internet and it would easily prove, you know, this thing. And also I, I think he'd want to prove it. If I was the real person, I, would, I wouldn't want to be unproven forever. I'd want to be proven. And um, yeah, it's just a very strange story as it happened. Yeah, it is, it is. But yeah, I mean, the, the, um, if you look at what, what Craig is, is doing, he is partly uh, using uh, Bitcoin history uh, and, 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 and mixing himself in it, but he's also partly trying to rewrite uh, 
uh, Bitcoin history and, and there it totally doesn't work. He's trying, um, for example, to bring back Bitcoin history uh, to uh, roughly to the year 2000, 1997 somehow with something called Blacknet. Now that this uh, a bullshit story has been debunked uh, from every angle uh, uh, possible almost. Uh, then he uh, tried to bring in uh, Dave Kleiman with a lot of uh, forged uh, emails. Now, every single email with Dave Kleiman, Craig Wright, related to Bitcoin, every single email, and there are dozens of them, have all been debunked, sent from domains that never existed, uh, with PGP keys that has been uh, used uh, in 2014 after Dave Kleiman was already dead with forged PGP keys. It, it's amazing how many types of forgeries he tried there to bring in Dave Kleiman as a team member in, in the Satoshi. Yeah, none of it stands, none of it stands. So yeah, it ended up that, uh, especially after he started with his lawsuit. Uh, where oh, Dave, and and uh, going, going to those forgeries just for a second, I'm not a lawyer, but if you make one forgery, you're a forger. If you make multiple forgeries, you're a mass forger and your story just keeps getting worse and worse. Like doing nothing is better than forging documents. Mm. Uh, why do this? If you were the real person, like it just. No, the, uh, the, the, the judges in Florida already said several times in their papers, uh, inconceivable. And it's a word I will never forget anymore. <laughs> Well, and judges are very serious when they use a joking word like inconceivable from the Princess Bride. Like they're being serious about how ridiculous this is. Yeah. But let's go on to one of the things that happened next, the, the kind of the carnival of proof. And this is, again, kind of another sad moment for Bitcoin because mm -hmm. we lose some really great Bitcoiners. John Matonis, early Bitcoin Foundation member, and Gavin Andreessen, the early programmer on Bitcoin, lead coder. For a lot of the time that I was starting out with mad Bitcoins and stuff, got to meet him once in San Francisco, seemed like a really nice guy. Uh, but unfortunately, at least from our perspective here, it seems that Gavin and John Matonis both got fooled. Um, mm -hmm. So let's talk a little bit about this. As far as I know, they, you know, Satoshi or this guy, Craig Wright, starts saying that he's Satoshi Nakamoto. And then Gavin Andreessen, lead developer of the Bitcoin project at the time, which you would think would be a great witness, right? This is a person that could understand if you show him some Bitcoin code, he'd be like, that's the code. If you showed him an older version of the code, maybe he'd be like, I could see how that's the code that led to the code. You know, this is a the code guy. But unfortunately, it seems like they use tricks and mirrors and things that maybe the code guy wouldn't think about to fool him. They bring in some kind of a laptop. They have some kind of a signature transaction. Gavin doesn't Tra trace the origin of the laptop so it could have been messed with gavin doesn't trace the wi-fi so it could have been messed with so there's all these external factors that just a basic security person would be like well if you want to prove this you know we're going to go into a faraday cage we're going to go into a black box we're going to get a best buy laptop that i've confirmed was shrink wrapped and never opened we're going to use a new router you're just going to eliminate all these kind of options and instead it seems that they did the proof in, in this open, wide open, loosey goosey kind of way. Is, did is you that know that they uh, they they uh, did this with uh, what is called the Electrum Electrum wallet, and that uh, can be hacked with two or three lines of code and make a fake uh, signature. It's sad uh, that it was possible, but it is not unlikely that Craig, uh, because, well, of course, he is uh, not so technical, <laughs> and then I'm being friendly, but he is a, uh, somewhat technical and somewhat experienced with computer and a little bit of coding. And it, it, it looks like that he was able to find this leak in, in Electrum and, and used some, some DOS uh, code to make a uh, fake uh, signings uh, possible with the Electrum wallet. And that, that is oh. what has been found out uh, yeah, for a while already. But um, it, it's possible that it happened uh, that way. But yeah, it, it cannot be faked, of course, uh, in, an, um, uh, in a blog post. And that is uh, also quite famous from the same era in May 2016. 
yeah, that, that blog post where he tried to bamboozle a bit around uh, something that was assigned with some Sartre text. Yeah, it has been by every specialist in the field uh, been uh, debunked. And I remember uh, reading uh, Jonathan Beer, uh, his uh, his book about uh, the, 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 the block size war. And and he was also like, I, I've been <laughs> scrolling through that article about the Sartre signing. This is just a guy trying to bamboozle everybody. This is just techno babble, meaningless nonsense. And, and, and that's how he works. That's how he is impressing people who, who do not have the brains and the understanding of how to see through this nonsense that you're spouting on us. Because if you go back two or three sentences, it's already not 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 yeah not correct anymore. It, it doesn't make sense. It, it's not co coherent. I think that's the English word for it also. And um, yeah, that's his trick. Now let's let's take this from Gavin's perspective, because again, Gavin's you know he's just kind of, he's a normal guy. He's like me. He probably wants there to be Satoshi. He's probably really impressed. He's in this hotel room. He's looking at this computer and he's going to be proven something. So you're in the mode of accepting or not accepting the, you know, buttons pushed, the things sent, the signature pops up. It says mm -hmm. signature. Okay. And your option then is to be credulous and to say, well, this is true. You are Satoshi. You proved it. Or to be curious and be like, well, I'm not sure about this. Maybe we should look behind it. Maybe you should do it again. Maybe you should do it on my laptop. Maybe you should do it on mm -hmm. Joe's laptop. You know, maybe just do it five. What, why does it matter? You could do it, you know, publicly. It does. And that's it's just, we, it's strange that we don't get that, right? Like you say, there's a blog post that's made and then the wider internet comes in and you know how the wider internet is. They fix, they know everything, right? They've got an expert on this. They got an expert. On that. Well, that, 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 that's what's happening all the time. I mean, Kelvin uh, last year or, or at the start of this year, he, he at one point claimed that Craig is now doing signing sessions for groups of people. It's like, wow, amazing. Thousands of people already must have seen these guy signing why doesn't he do it in the public well first of all probably those signing for groups <laughs> sessions never happened and it's just another lie but um his tricks won't work in public because there are so many bitcoin ogs and and cryptographers and cypherpunks and people who can immediately see yeah sorry this is fake this is this is bamboozlement this is it sounds it sounds like a magician like i can do my trick for you but only in a small group in a pre-controlled yeah. environment where i use this special table and not a normal table this table you know and it's so obvious but again we're, we're living in this split and fractured society a, a larger vision of this would be the trump situation where a similar con man with similar propaganda is fooling similar people. And I think a lot of this, if you really want to talk about it, goes back to propaganda was very effective in World War II. Uh, mm -hmm. Advertising, Bernays, uh, all those kind of people. And they, the, uh, the thing to do with that, after you win World War II, you could sit back and you could say, well, that was really effective. We made the people hate the enemy. Maybe we should not do that again. Maybe we should teach the people to see the difference between propaganda and information. Mm -hmm. But that's not what they did, right? They said, this worked so well. How can we use this to sell things? And then mm -hmm. selling things became very complicated and very much about controlling people, maybe more than they'd liked. And if you guys want to learn more about this, check out the films of Adam Curtis. Adam Curtis, he's an amazing documentary maker from the BBC, has access to their archives. He's got a new one now. Blows my mind every time. Just totally amazing. Detail, detail, detail. And a new way of thinking about it that when you step back and you're like, oh, yeah, this all kinds of makes sense when you look at it. And so, yeah, they have all these people now that are gullible to advertising, which essentially advertising is the same thing as propaganda. Propaganda mm -hmm. is false information designed to make you think or feel something or believe something completely false, like a false stimuli. It's false. Yeah. And Trump is a master of it. And he's out there fooling people. And now we have a split in our American society on masks, on the virus, on the election, on this uh, insurrection at the Capitol. We have all these splits. And it's, I think it's the same kind of thing, if you really want to look at where one of them's fooling them with you know, a big jet and a flashy car and a supermodel wife and all this kind of stuff. And he's so rich and stuff. The other one's fooling them with you know, these magician tricks and going behind the things and techno babble 
And it's the mm-hmm. same kind of thing where there's a, a portion of society, maybe some of them, they want to believe this. They want to be fooled. They're, they're in on it, right? They're like, I know he's not Satoshi, but I want to make lots of money, right? There's those people. And then there's other people that I, I don't want to be mean to them, but you know, they're easily led. They're fooled by propaganda. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I don't have the, the, the medical. Yeah, I, I don't have the medical uh, background to to be. Yeah, it, it, uh, I have to make a guess here, but it, it, to me, it appears a bit that it it has some cult like features. Many actually, uh, religious like um, uh, outings also, but. What I also notice is that uh, again, this is a bit of a guess. He is a kind of a, in, in a certain way, he is a father figure and people who miss a real life Satoshi who needs to have a an, an mythical project like Bitcoin uh, conquering the world and, uh, but it needs a father, a godlike figure and he fulfills that role. So the, his fans, I expect many of them to have father issues, parental issues having had uh, a bad youth and, and, and again this this is a bit of a guess um, but it, yeah it, it, it ends up being the flat earthers and, and with a lot of conspiracy theories about many things that I'm like whoa do you really believe that and you cannot even prove it it's just that somebody has been spoon feeding you this nonsense and you parrot it like uh, it's it's the truth but <laughs> There's no proof for uh, lizards and and Blockstream doing this and and uh, the developers uh, having control over all the code and and it's amazing it's really amazing what all kinds of conspiracy the- uh, theories these people have and, a and, good and this, is, this is a thing that can be this is thing he, that can be proved if if Satoshi yeah. had the keys he could sign the keys so what can we say right now we can say well we can't say that he's we can say that. You know, the, he, well, we can say he's not Satoshi. I mean, I think basically we can say because you don't have the keys, you're not Satoshi. If you do have the keys, you could prove you are Satoshi. Um, we can also say that everyone else is not Satoshi. We all don't have the keys. Like until someone shows up with the keys, there's no one to say. So I don't know how they could go from that to say, maybe he's Satoshi because of this. Maybe he's Satoshi. Well, no, either you prove it with the keys or you don't. And if he had anything else, early code, early emails like you said these various things yeah it's, it's very provable things. and i don't know how you could side on this on this other side where it's like i don't have the proof but i believe him anyway <laughs> yeah but this, that's totally against the bitcoin spirit also <laughs> yeah yeah the whole point of bitcoin is like the trustless nature don't, of the thing you know you verify. know yeah don't trust <laughs> verify like it's yeah. it's right there in like the code like faith in numbers all the early slogans all the things everyone talked about all the programmers the open source nature the the debate over each little code edition all of this is factual on paper but mm-hmm. again i don't think it's the programmers that got fooled i don't think it's the cypherpunks or those people i think there was a lot of these other people that are around bitcoin that maybe like you're saying this cult idea the religious idea uh not just a father figure but also being in a group like you're mm-hmm. one of the ones that believes in satoshi so therefore you have all these friends now who also believe in satoshi and you can all have group think together and you can be in a little like we're saying with the information you can be in your own information zone where you only get information that you agree with you could even now go to conferences and find people you agree with and other speakers and other youtubes and all these things i remember we had a guy shambu spain he left for i think it was bsv or maybe bch i don't even remember anymore but totally normal bitcoin guy all like on the up and up and then all of a sudden he flipped some switch and he's like bsv is the god and like all these videos and he did pretty well because it's a, a whole subculture and a whole community and they needed somebody and he had some skills and that kind of thing. But as far as having the proof, he never had it. They never had it. I don't know. Maybe it was just a like a LARPing, like a fun, like let's pretend that we're in this Satoshi crew. And then it, it's kind of, you get into it, you get into the idea. It's a very strange, a psychological type phenomenon. Yeah. 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 And, it's, it's, it, it will be a study in, uh, it's it's a it's a study a field of study uh, uh, yeah for somebody who's more experienced uh, with it I'm I'm more into the 
the debunking of the, uh, the straightforward lies and, and, and forgeries. And that's why I already know if you build up, it starts with uh, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 uh, lies and forgeries. And, and now we already have hundreds and hundreds of lies and forgeries that are known and debunked uh, thoroughly. And um, yeah, the only thing that he has been proving is a negative. <laughs> you're only proving more and more and more that you're not Satoshi. So that's, uh, if he needs a Nobel prize, it's gonna be for proving a negative. So after the, the carnival of proof with Gavin Andreessen and John Matonis, and they come out with full-throated support that this is Satoshi, I believe him, uh, I'd stake my son's life on it, all that kind of stuff comes out. And, and then there's the backlash, right? They, they, he tries to prove it on the mailing list. He tries to prove it publicly. And the proof doesn't stand up. All the real cryptographers don't buy this. They don't trust the key. Uh, what happens next? When you mean in uh, 2016, we've now arrived in, uh, in 2016. Yeah, that was when um, afterwards in 2017 and 18 were the years that he was uh, slowly uh, yeah, recouping himself a bit for, for in, in, in the BCH uh, community. But at some point early 2018, it was somewhat uh, decided uh, in the background, probably with Kelvin Air. Uh, involved uh, also um, that they should have their own um, uh, token. You, you should not forget, by the way, that in 2015 it was Kelvin Air and um, uh, and two other guys, uh, Stefan Matthews and Robert McGregor, who have been bailing out uh, Craig Wright from the ATO uh, from the tax fraud uh, era, and it means that um, it. I have to say I cannot fully prove it with documents, but I know that um, Craig has been emailing in that uh, already in June when uh, Kelvin was involved, he already told uh, Kelvin that he had money in the Tulip Trust, those, well, 1 million Bitcoin, so to say. And um, we don't know if afterwards, after he told Kelvin, uh, if Kelvin tried to get a stake or, or he, he took a loan from those Tulip Trust from Kelvin uh, as, a, as a collateral or something, we are not 100% sure, but it, 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 it makes sense if, if something happened uh, back there and it, it, based on the Tulip Trust um, uh, Bitcoin, Kelvin uh, keeps on sponsoring him. Now, at some point, it might have happened, again, this is a bit of a guesswork, it might have happened that Kelvin starts pushing that he wants to see more and more evidence and probably also money back from the from the patents, from the copyright, from the database, from the Tudor Trust, uh, whatever uh, stories uh, Craig has been telling uh, Kelvin. And um, Kelvin, sorry, Craig needed to have his own controllable environment, BSV, because then he could- uh, well, before, go before I go to BSV, let's, let's do yeah. BCH. So there was a, a big scaling debate, went on for years. Uh, whether we should make the block size bigger or whether we should do other things and whether we should adopt technology like SegWit, which allowed to link to transactions and things like that. Uh, eventually, it was kind of unofficially discovered that there was an ASIC boost bug that perhaps Bitmain was taking advantage of to mine faster and get more money and that they were just stalling in the block size war. They didn't want SegWit to be adopted because every day that SegWit wasn't adopted, they made more money. So yeah. all you had to do was stall months and months and months. Everyone's like having this intellectual debate. What should we do? And presu uh, presumably the biggest player is just, we should get them to wait. We should get them to wait. And it's a, dis it's an, you know, a dishonest way of arguing, right? It's not intellectually mm -hmm. true. And so all of that builds. And then, and then this guy comes along and he says, UASF. And he says, if the nodes signal UASF, then we just adopt this thing. And we just run through this and we're done. And he put a line in the sand. He said, if everyone's on board, let's do it. Let's do it. And then somehow everyone got motivated. We all turned it around. Everyone agreed UASF and the, the Bitcoin adopted the upgrade. But right before that, and I'm not exactly sure who did this. I'm pretty sure it was the Bitmain guys. They readied a copy of Bitcoin in case they wanted to use it 
as an alternative. And this was where BCH kind of gets its start. And this, yeah, this fork yeah. happened, this copy's there. I don't know that Bitmain was the one that activated it. Like it was kind of like it was there lying on the shelf and then someone activates it. And then pretty soon we have two versions of Bitcoin uh, for potential confusion with the brand name attempted you know, takeover of the brand name, which would have been bad if you go to Coinbase and you buy Bitcoin, but it's really Bitcoin cash and you send it to your Bitcoin wallet and it doesn't work and you lose all your money. Like disastrous brand confusion, like money lost, which yeah. happened anyway. But so this happens. Now there's two Bitcoins. Roger Veer is with this Bitcoin cash Bitcoin. Uh, this Craig Wright is with this Bitcoin cash Bitcoin. And, and they've got all these, you know, great friends sitting around the table. And it's just like reservoir dogs. You are know, like, I can trust them. It's a gang of criminals. You, there's no one you can trust better than a gang of criminals. Yeah, amazing, amazing period. The, um, it, it was actually for me for uh, following Craig Wright, I lost a little bit of interest uh, in him because he was not so so much in the media and it looked like that he had, uh, 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 yeah, lost the, yeah, how do you say this? He lost the media attention for, for being Satoshi, that he only started it up, um, of course, with, with, with BSV later. So his, the, the most remarkable moment that I remember from the BCH era was when he, uh, when Craig Wright started to promote, believe it or not, uh, more anonymous and, 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 uh, uh yeah let's let's call it anonymous transactions and in later years he totally turned around uh, about anonymity and 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 private transactions and uh, and yeah he, how did he call it <laughs> transactions hidden not hidden but it's almost something like that like confidential uh, transactions the for for the uh, the anonymous uh, that the uh, uh, participants can be anonymous, uh, as uh, Satoshi uh, said, uh, which makes sense from a fungibility uh, standpoint. But um, yeah, uh, uh, Craig wanted to introduce that on uh, on BCH, and uh, that was the big plan. And they uh, they were supposed to do that within uh, I think three, four, five months. Uh, in, in I remember May or something. It never happened, but that's another story. But at, at least um, th that was for me a remarkable point, especially because in, in later years he uh, yeah he, he changed his uh, tune uh, dramatically uh, about the same subject. So he's with he's with these BCH guys. They've got their own coin. They can do anything they want. They want. Obviously, you can count on him to write the code for those confidential transactions himself. He'll take care of that. But what happens next? What's the the straw that breaks the camel's back? Where they say, all right. Enough of this BCH. It's BSV time. Yeah, that that, that, that was uh, in in yeah late uh, late two thousand eighteen. The, the 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 exact breaking points. What was being discussed behind closed door closed doors? I remember uh, Craig uh, running away from some meeting with miners or something. Um, and uh, he pretended to be angry uh, about something. And, and to be honest, I don't know the details because again, it, it, that is more the political games that are being played. And, and I'm, I'm more into, does this connect with that? Is it a lie or is it a forgery? And, and that is a bit my specialty. The, the, the politics, how and why and which dates that exactly happened. Um, um, uh, please forgive me. I'm, I'm not so good in those dates. Uh, uh so, so now but, now they've got their own coin they've got bitcoin yeah. sv which stands for satoshi's vision so we're putting the the brand name in the brand now and it's pretty much uh calvin air and craig wright that are the supporters of bsv who have broken off from roger mm -hmm. veer and maybe jihan Wu. i don't know if bitmain's still supporting bs or bch at this point uh, i know he was an early early supporter of, of BCH. He was kind of on the fence and then he, he went for it for a while. But yeah. um, so, so what does this give them now that it's just Calvin and Craig? Uh, do they have the, can they make their own Bitcoin? Can they print more Bitcoin? Uh, do they no, get yeah. early the, Satoshi the, coin somehow? Uh, the, the, the deal that was made in 2015 was that uh, the, the, the guys, uh, the people sponsoring Craig Wright and bailing him out from, from Australia, 
they were promised uh, to become uh, literally billionaires on 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 the the, the still to be written uh, patents and, and and the copyright on the bitcoin uh, stuff and um that for for that reason I, th I think that is also part of the background why they why they needed to have their own chain so they could control things more and uh, the moment they start to have pat uh, patents and 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 start to uh, uh, do patent trolling then they hope to attract more uh, apps and and developers on uh, on their own chain um, because they are being forced uh, to use the free patents uh, within the environment of bsv and otherwise uh, i'm going to sue you and um, uh, uh, or you have to pay a large uh, license fee that was I guess. Well, what, what else do you do with a patent to make well, money? And this, is, this is obviously such a Satoshi thing to do. The person who gave us Bitcoin, donated the code, left the community, didn't spend this billions of dollars. He would be the one who would come back and entrap you in a patent scheme. Because oh, that wow. all of the character, all of the writing, all of the everything we know about Satoshi says, that guy with the patent scheme, that seems like Satoshi yeah. to me. <laughs> And, and and wouldn't yeah, you just break off if you if you join the cult and you got this far and I know cults are hard to get out of it's a complex thing, but you join the yeah, cult but, and then the guy's like, I mean, we're, we're, I got a genius on, idea. We, like we, I invented we this whole thing. You, we're gonna sue them. We're gonna sue them out of business. That's how we're gonna make money. By golly, I'm a genius. How could you keep following this guy? You got nothing. Nay, nay. That's why it is it's totally beyond me that. When I meet uh, those people online, uh, especially on on Twitter, and and they start talking about uh, uh, patents to me, and and how can you even defend a Satoshi having patents? It's so you have to have a a, a pretty weird brain damage to be able to understand that Satoshi. He would never do patents or anything like it when he puts the code open and wide and for everybody to see on um yeah, where did it start sourceforge and then later on on, on github and uh, no yeah well and I, I don't think i'm a radical cypherpunk here or anything but i'm against the entire idea of software patents i don't even think there should be a thing i think you should be able to write the code and do what you want to do and I think there's a lot of other people on that cypherpunk mailing list back in the way who feel the same way. And I think Satoshi would be one of them. So yeah, it's a very shocking thing to see that the plan no, it, is it, to it, make money. I don't about, uh, about that. And, and that involves, uh, and I'll mention him again, Adam Beck, he wrote, uh, for example, on the, on the cypherpunk um, environment, he wrote uh, the, the so-called anti-license. So the first release of Bitcoin fell under the so-called anti-license. And there is a non-litigation uh, chapter uh, in, in that uh, anti-license. And, and that was the environment where Satoshi was releasing and, and spreading his information and, and, and releasing the code and the white paper and everything. And, 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 and a bit later, it fell under the, the MIT uh, license. And now you have Greg Wright demanding and and claiming to have the copyright, and now he wants to pull uh, the plug from uh, Bitcoin.org, and and that they should not have the the white paper anymore. It's uh, yeah, I'm speechless. Wait, I think I got the perfect uh, meme for this. Let me go to this. It's like he has a, a little sign and he's going around, uh, but his would say, I am not Satoshi because he just keeps proving it. He just keeps going around place to place. I am Satoshi, but everything that he does proves the opposite. Yet still thousands, tens of thousands of people believe him. Still these coins are going on. Still these large companies are being scammed and these lawyers and these people who don't understand the technology who don't understand the details and who have been bamboozled. And again, really, really good con men like Trump or allegedly like Craig Wright, uh, they're great at talking. They're great at making you feel good and making you feel like you're the most important person in the world. And also that you're meeting with a genius. You're meeting with the smartest person in the world who's thought of everything and that everything's going to be fine just as soon as you give me the money that I want. And then things are never fine and you never get the money back. But uh, it's just very strange to see this go on. And now 
you know, it's been years now, there's been all these different coins, all these different things, and, and still no proof, no signatures, no early code, no early emails, nothing, right? No, he was supposed uh, to have the, the Tulip Trust uh, 1 million uh, Bitcoins in uh, January 2020. And the, the cult, the BSV cult is still alive. And we have never seen one BTC move being signed uh, whatsoever after January 2020. Now, now a little bit about that. That was kind of like that scene in Back to the Future 2, Back to the Future 3, where Doc Brown sends a telegram from 1880 to 1986 to Marty. And Marty's supposed to meet the telegram guy at an intersection at a certain time, at a certain date, and that the telegram guy will come. And this time, the telegram is not information about Doc and how he's traveled back in time. The telegram is uh, somehow, again, it's a mystery to me, but it's like part of the key, or it's a map to find the key, or it's a derivation of the key through math or something. I don't know. But the keys and the things you need to find the keys are in this magical envelope that the Tulip Trust or something has, and they're going to give it to you at the corner of 4th Street and Elm Street in Chicago, Illinois, at 5 p.m. on Thursday, January 20th, 2020, and it's raining, and the guy's there, and he's like, yeah, I, you know, the boys at the office didn't think there'd be anybody here, especially somebody meeting your description. And so we're all waiting, right? We're waiting for this special day where the envelope's going to come and the keys are in there. And this is going to change everything. And if you're a BSV, yep. you're like, oh, this is my moment, right? This is my, you know, space alien landing. This is it. And it doesn't happen. And there's no keys and there's no telegram. And there's no meeting and no one even goes to 4th and Elm Street. So, so Craig doesn't even go. And, and there's some of the more, more technical uh, cult members of, of in the BSV environment for months, and they're still doing it. They're still checking uh, the blockchain for Satoshi coins moving. And the moment they think that, oh, do you see them tweet and then everybody responding, oh, this might be a Craig, this might be, this might be, this might be. This might be. <laughs> it's so sad. It's so sad. Well, we have the same parallels here in the United States where the secret conspiracy led by Q was supposed to have a big reveal on this day and Trump was supposed to become president and all these things are supposed to happen and it didn't happen and it keeps not happening and all of Q's predictions are all false and the pedophile basement in the pizza place there's no basement there's just no basement like mm -hmm. it's like how more fake can you be like the classic Pee Wee Herman movie like your bicycle is in the basement of the Alamo there's no basement in the Alamo his bicycle's not there. Like, wake up. Like, what, what more can it take? Like, boom, boom, boom. Fake, fake, fake. Like, yeah. nothing true. All this stuff. But again, if you're trapped, you're in a cult, you've been brainwashed, you want to believe this, you have things that happened to you in your past, you were paid. There's all kinds of reasons why you keep believing this, you know, publicly. But the minute you get them backstage, they're like, you know, that cue is ridiculous. Like the Republican senators are like, I can't believe what Trump said on Twitter, blah, blah, blah. But you go outside and they're like, oh, I think he's a great person. Or, oh, whoa, whoa. Yeah. It's the same thing, the same microcosm in our community and the larger communities. We just need to train people critical thinking. It's a matter of a failure of critical thinking, I think, where people are, are not taught to, to break through sources, to question things, to challenge things. Yeah. I grew up in like a debate environment, so I was always... I think many of them will end up in, 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 I mean, there are a few examples, and, and well, actually, there's one famous example uh, in, in the BSV community, uh, and I sometimes, yeah, of course, all the hardcore, the really hardcore, they, they all have me blocked on Twitter, but of course there you can uh, move around a little bit and then, and then I check them out sometimes just to see what is going on in that uh, camp. And, and um, But uh, yeah, there's one of those guys, he came, he came straight from BitConnect from one scam to the next. And you can uh, take his lies from BitConnect and uh, when you confront him, you're being immediately blocked. But, uh, and he will still use the same tricks in, in BSV. And why? No idea. Just for the fame and, and the name, I guess. But it's it's the same type as, as Craig. He just um, he makes up a lot of bullshit, uh, rather easy debunkable stories. 
if you do not take them at face value and the moment you only take them at face value you like, oh wow 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 and uh, that he is so clever and uh, with all the uh, it, it's almost the same type as craig also pre a lot of pretending to have done things and meet people and <sighs> well i remember he's a swimming champion and he's great at pool and he's a chess master and he can stand on one foot and he knows Arabic. I mean, he knows 12 uh, types of uh, martial arts and yeah, it, it, he's a, a, a Michelin star chef. Uh, it's amazing what this Craig has all been saying all these years. It's yeah. Phenomenal, man. It's like Zelig. He's just everybody to everything. He's everywhere. It's like Forrest Gump. Yeah, but it, it, just it goes it, to it, thing it, to thing, you know? The, shock, the shocking thing is, most of those people they 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 experience those things in a bit kind of superficial way i mean they do not hear and read and see the whole picture when they come across an anecdote like craig is reading six thousand books per year and he is doing 12 studies at six different universities yeah. i just i just remember oh, okay yeah kim jong, oh, okay. Kim jong un he wants to get a hole in one possible. But then, if you also combine that with, but he is writing 50 white papers per year, he is uh, uh, writing uh, hundreds and hundreds of patents per year, he is uh, doing um, coding or whatever. If you put it all together, if you put several sources together, what Craig has been telling in this environment, in this environment, in this, env this environment, then it's like, Wow, you're a 5,000 uh, uh, man uh, army all by yourself. It's just not possible. So, yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing. But these people keep on believing. And now it's been five years, and we have three different Bitcoins at least, probably more. Well, we only have Where, one. Bit. I know, we really have one. But there's three, there's a bunch of copies, and it confuses people. Yeah. But, um, so where, where does it go from here? Does this just keep going? Obviously, he can't prove it. Oh, you, we can't disprove it. You can't prove a negative, right? You can't be like, well, we have proof that he is not. But we don't have any proof that he is. And he certainly hasn't put any proof forward that stands up that he is. Does this just keep going? Does he keep no. thinking that he's Satoshi forever? No, but what I think, hope, but also kind of pretty sure there's two things on this there is a way like the ato did in 2016 when they sort of nullified all his um, tax dealings and uh, brought out their reports about his companies and the things he has been doing and there is a, a famous quote that i take from from one of those reports and it's called nullity based on sham and the moment they they just Craig, what you have been telling us it doesn't exist and it never happened and it will never happen and it it's nothing it's a nullity based on sham and that made the ato realize and that, that, that reached the, the press in australia also that uh, the quote we firmly believe uh, that Craig Wright is not Satoshi Nakamoto, the, the creator of Bitcoin, the inventor of Bitcoin. Just based on there is no evidence. We we have to nullify everything and, and, and what he is telling us and what he is saying and what he is doing. And that made them reach this conclusion. And that makes total sense for everybody who is going through these reports um, and and. and there's no way that you cannot come to that same conclusion, so to say. And going forward, I think his uh, his end game has started this year in in uh, January, when he started to uh, 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 rant with uh, nuclear Armageddon, and I'm going to make uh, life of all the developers miserable, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And you saw him ramp up several. I remember uh, that he had like a, a ticking clock. He was like, "Next year, yeah. I will break all Bitcoin transactions. Yeah. On this day, I will reveal magical code that no one knows about that breaks everything." The fatal flaw, and then uh, I will bring Segwit down, and uh, the Lightning Network I will pull apart. And he has been saying a lot of things, 
But the thing is, he kept his word that he was starting to do those lawsuits. Huh? The, the, the libel suits uh, started, still running against uh, Peter McCormick and, and Hoddlenot. And, um, uh, and now he ramped it up with uh, hey, Cobra Bitcoin for, for the white paper. But you now also see that people are getting irritated. So Cop uh, Copa is now chasing him for the copa, uh, copyright. He has now this case against uh, the developers. And um, probably that's it almost. <laughs> there are so many now because it's- And again, just going, going back to the analogy of, of the person we have here in the United States who just a few days ago, it was announced that the New York district attorneys are opening up a grand jury against former president Donald Trump uh, for mm -hmm. his business dealings and other things. And it's the kind of thing where it's the stuff everyone's been saying all along. All along, they've been saying his taxes, He's hiding something and mm. it takes years and years and years. But just like with Craig Wright, his lack of proof, he's hiding something eventually, hopefully, and we're still not sure yet, the legal system takes care of it. The gears of justice grind. Like you say, we have that statement from the Australian court. He is, mm. to our knowledge, he's not Satoshi Nakamoto. Like you said, uh, maybe we need one of those from the US court, from the, the UK court eventually. And again, he's, He's going to ride this out. He's going to go jurisdiction by jurisdiction. They're going to have to probably boot him from each one of these jurisdictions, or eventually he'll screw up and actually break a law. And then who knows, maybe he'll end up in jail. But yeah, the, the hard part is, is the, the, the uh, because for me, it's pretty clear the guy is a con man. He's, he's a total fraud in, in everything he's doing. But the, the thing is, you have to uh, catch him in, in court and, and, um, uh, nail him down on this fraud and when he is suing 16 developers that case should make an, 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 an 180 degrees uh, turn to be pushed back to him and, and it takes some effort a judge has to has to has to rule for that but it first takes uh, the 16 uh, developers case yeah, where he is trying uh, to, to get his 110,000 uh, bitcoin that was uh, supposedly hacked from his house yeah, I can already tell you <laughs> that never happened. <laughs> that whole case is full of forgeries. I've, I've seen from one of the developers. I've seen the, the whole package uh, that they received. It's stuffed with forgeries, lies, and uh, and 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 things, so that that it will explode in in his face. I'm already one hundred percent sure. Um, but we will learn. But after that, it should be uh, a judge saying, "Yeah, sorry, but what you are trying here is just." fraud and and now i have to make it a criminal case and uh, from going from a civil case to a criminal case and then push it back in his face and it, it takes so much time as far as we know he he is maybe probably also still under criminal investigation of the ato in 2018 uh he was we are 100 sure we've seen the letters uh pop up in climate versus right uh, lawsuit that um some uh, Melanie uh, something was um, asking uh, uh, the Climate Council uh, some questions. So yeah, but is that, uh, has that, uh, uh, how do you call that, ended, that, that criminal investigations? We don't know. But no, it what sounds I very it, similar it, to the- end game has, has started. There are so many cases running now. It, and it, it only takes one the Hoddlenot case, the McCormick case, the Def cases, Cobra case, Copa case, all kinds of cases. It only takes one where the, the dice is not rolling in his favor anymore. And it can be so taxing for the people involved in this, the legal fees. It's similar to the case of like a patent troll where they're largely funded and they buy a bunch of patents and they go around trolling people. There was a major case recently where Joe Rogan, the podcaster, was attacked by one of these trolls and they attacked him because they said they owned a copyright of putting podcast episodes in order on an RSS feed. And it seems very absurd, again, I'm against all software patents here. So having that be a patent is just patently ridiculous, right? It's absurd. It's an obvious uh, idea that you would put something in a list on an RSS feed and do a podcast. But mm -hmm. these trolls have bought these bad patents and they can go around usually and they can shake down these smaller players. And it's better for you to pay a couple thousand dollars than to try to fight this with legal fees and years and years yeah. and years. 
And in this case, what happened is they picked on Joe Rogan and Joe Rogan was well-funded. So he got lawyers and he got other people and they all went back on him and they attacked the patent trolls. And then what you really need to do is keep attacking them because they have a bunch of other patents and they're trolling a bunch of other people and you have to kind of run them out. Uh, but again, years and millions of dollars in legal fees uh, to yeah. fight this and tons of people's time in the court and in the journalists and all of this, uh, all of this to someone who hasn't provided any proof. And it's been five years. Yeah. I, but I don't see another five years uh, going anymore. BSV and, and, and especially Craig Wright in the, in the Bitcoin arena will be gone within the dead man. Yeah, I'm pretty sure about that. Like I said, his end game has, has started. There's too much, it, you, you can already see it in his face. It's taking its toll. He's looking unhealthy. He's not, he's, no, he's not doing well anymore. So either he is going to Antigua or another place where he is hiding and uh, taking uh, his last few millions from, uh, from Kelvin and uh, lives a, a happy life. Or he goes to jail within a few years. That, that, that is, if you ask me, that should, if justice is, uh, uh, is being done, that is what should happen. But yeah, he has uh, rich uh, friends, so he can easily take uh, a cab or a boat <laughs> to another country. Well, you know how it is. One day you're on top of the world, you're the leader of Germany, and the next day you shoot yourself in the head in an underground bunker. So we'll just have to see how it turns out. And he had lots of enablers and lots of people that helped him along the way. And yep. it's been a very interesting story in Bitcoin, but eventually I think it has to end. And uh, so too does this interview. So Arthur, where can people check out your work? Uh, tell us a little bit about your Twitter. Uh, let me see. And then I'm, I'm going to do some memes at the end. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, if you, uh, I think most of your viewers will already follow me. Uh, uh, but if you're new uh, to me and, and you're interested in the subject, I post uh, quite regularly, uh, probably a handful of uh, times uh, a day, uh, because I, I can quickly look up things. I, I, I'm, I'm pretty handy on, uh, on a computer. Uh, it does not take, sometimes it takes a lot of time, of course, but um, my legacy kit, uh, you, you, maybe you can get it in the screen. Uh, my legacy kit is where I, is my name on uh, on Twitter. And there you will find all my posts about BSV and uh, but especially about Craig Wright. Uh, what I'm doing since years uh, indeed, huh, as you said, for two, three years already now, uh, is I map out all his lies and frauds. Uh, and, and my aim with that, it, I call it a hobby, it is sometimes time consuming, especially when I need to read uh, court uh, papers, but it's for the benefit of people who are interested to know the real story of uh, Craig Wright and who don't want to fall in the traps of, uh, of the BSV cult. And um, uh, I also have many lawyers uh, following me. So I know from the sidelines that my stuff is also being used uh, by, uh, by people who are fighting him in uh, court. Well, thank you, Arthur, for doing this. I know it's a, it's a volunteer work. You don't get thanked very often, uh, but I do really appreciate this. It's good for the Bitcoin community to have someone to push back against this. Uh, just that's as why I call young. myself a sniper in the backyard of Bitcoin. <laughs> well, that's it. And everyone here on Bitcoin is a volunteer. No one came to you and said yeah. that you must be the one to help track down these frauds. No one came to me, told me hey. to start doing Bitcoin shows. Hey, I'm, Everyone I'm not, does what I'm they not can. Yeah. Paid, not by any council, not by any uh, 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 lightning labs or Blockstream or MasterCard or whatever conspiracy theory they're throwing at me. Uh, I live off uh, donations uh, to do this. Um, uh, and, and yeah, in fact, because now with all the lawsuits and I post regularly about it, I see, uh, yeah, on, on, on a weekly or sometimes on a daily basis, I see uh, a few euro, uh, well, in this case, BTC uh, uh, coming in. So thank you everybody who is doing that. And um, yeah, my legacy kit on Twitter, follow me if you like. <laughs> And we've got a link in the description below, right on this YouTube page. Uh, go out there and follow Arthur. Learn more about what Craig Wright is up to. Hopefully, like you say, we're reaching the end of this. Uh, but before that, uh, Julian Assange says, wait, I have one more thing to say. Craig Wright is not Satoshi. 
Yeah, golden oldie. <laughs> For my next amazing trick, I will move this coin. It would be just that easy. You claim you are Satoshi. Your lack of evidence determined that was a lie. You know, Mori Povich there. And here he is with the I am Satoshi sign. Obviously, if you were really Satoshi, you wouldn't need a sign. It's pretty mm -hmm. obvious. And the classic, I will not impersonate Satoshi Nakamoto. Very funny stuff. And there's just great memes out there. There's also breaking news that Craig Wright has confirmed that he is the real J.K. Rowling and that Craig Wright wrote the book Harry Potter. <laughs> so impressive news to end on. Thanks so much, Arthur, for joining us today. Uh, everyone, be sure to give us a, a thumbs up and a subscribe down below. Uh, this is the World Crypto Network. We do these kind of things all the time, and it's great to have you guys here. Thanks to everyone for joining us. It looked like there were some interesting discussions going on in the chat. So I welcome all the BCHers and BSVers. I look forward to your comments. Uh, you could give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down. It doesn't matter. YouTube is just looking for some interactivity there. So either way, it's great. But uh, thanks so much for watching us. Uh, we'll be back with the Bitcoin group tomorrow afternoon around this same time, one o'clock Pacific time. So thanks so much for joining us. Until next time, bye-bye. <laughs>